second trimester abortions. Second trimester abortions, that is, abortion at 12 to 20 weeks gestational age, have multiple etiologies, infection, maternal uterine or cervical anatomic, defects, maternal systemic disease, exposure to phytotoxic agents and trauma, are all associated with late abortions. Abnormal chromosomes are not a frequent cause of late abortions, late second trimester abortions and periviable deliveries are also seen with PTL and cervical insufficiency. As in first trimester abortions, the treatment plan is based on the specific clinical scenario. Incomplete and missed abortions can be allowed to finish on their own, but are often taken to completion with the D&E dilation and evacuation. The Distinction between a D and C and D and E depends on gestational age at the time of procedure, that is, first or second trimester. The fetus is larger in the second trimester, making the procedure more difficult. Between 16 and 24 weeks, either a D and E may be performed or labor may be induced with high doses of oxytocin or prostaglandins. The advantage of a D and E is that the procedure is self-limited and performed faster than an induction of labor. However, aggressive dilation is necessary prior to the procedure with laminaria, which are small rods of seaweed that are placed in the cervix one to two days prior to the procedure. These rods then expand as they absorb water, thereby dilating the cervix, and there is a small risk of uterine perforation and cervical lacerations. An induction of labor can take longer, but allows completion of the abortion without the inherent risks of instrumentation. An induction of labor also allows for the possibility of an external genetics examination or autopsy of the POC. Patient preference as well as the capabilities of the, the abortion without the inherent risks of instrumentation. An induction of labor also allows for the possibility of an external genetics examination or autopsy of the POC. Patient preference as well as the capabilities of the facility should be considered when choosing medical or surgical options. With either method, great care should be taken to ensure the complete Evacuation of all POC in the second trimester, the diagnosis of PTL and cervical insufficiency need to be ruled out, particularly in the setting of inevitable abortions or threatened abortions, the etiology is likely to be related to the inability of the uterus to maintain the pregnancy. PTL begins with contractions leading to cervical change whereas cervical insufficiency is characterized by painless dilation of the cervix. In the case of cervical insufficiency, an emergent circlage may be offered. PTL can potentially be managed with tocolysis.